Hello and welcome back to Functional PHP 7. You have arrived at section 3, Fundamentals of Functional Programming. And in this section, we finally leave behind all of the background and prep work and dive deeply into functional programming. In this section, we're going to define concretely what functional programming is. We're going to learn that it's really based on this pillar called the pure function, which ties into the referential transparency and correctness that we talked about in the section 2. And then finally, towards the end, we'll compare and contrast the idea of using loops versus recursion and hopefully in order to get you to um, end your imperative mindset. Now this is not to say that you will never be able to use loops or even conditional statements, if then else statements and things like that, but you'll do so whenever practical without sacrificing the purity and the correctness of the algorithm. First, let's begin by defining what functional programming really is. Functional programming refers to the declarative evaluation of pure functions to create immutable programs by avoiding externally observable side effects. And so notice that I've taken the liberty to parse out some key terms here. We're going to look at code that is declarative, and you know what that means from previous sections, that is immutable, and that is free of side effects. But learning the definition of functional programming isn't enough. Functional programming is more about a state of mind that embraces statelessness. Now it's still a general purpose paradigm in the sense that you can still solve all of the turn complete algorithms that you can solve with any other paradigm like object-oriented or imperative or structural, but the mind shift is leaning towards a mathematical reasoning, towards looking at functions as these rigorous uh, mappings between one type and, and the other, and also leaving behind things like assignment statements. It's not that we're going to completely eliminate them, but in the immutable world then there's really no need for mutations, therefore there wouldn't be a need to assign to variables. And so in that sense, you also eliminate loops because you apply that, a loop implies that there's this counter that's constantly mutating. Functional programs are rooted on the notion of pure functions. These are the pillars behind this paradigm. And I'll continue to repeat this as many times as possible uh, for you to understand that thinking functionally is about thinking in a world of pure mappings between types with no side effects, and that functions are really just references to a lazy computed value, some kind of representation of a value that doesn't change when called on the same input. So I'll continue to repeat these statements because it's important that we get really, really comfortable with this as we progress through this course. A distinguished fellow by the name of Robert Martin, who we know in the software community as Uncle Bob for pioneering the agile movement, among other things, wrote an interesting article comparing paradigms to each other. Now this is by no means an exhaustive list, but it's interesting to see the effects of using a paradigm over our language. So for instance, modular programming removes limitless files because now we tend to decompose things better and then join the results. Structured programming removes the go-to. Object-oriented programming removes this concept known as function pointers, more in the, in the C world, for inheritance and polymorphism. And then functional programming takes away assignment and mutable state. So it really comes down to which paradigm removes the necessary features to allow you to reason about your code better. 